video, we will explore the scattering process which demonstrated the existence of the atomic nucleus. We will also discuss how to calculate and measure a cross-section which is very important in our discussion of radiation physics. And in this uh, Rutherford experiment discussion, the goal is to have a semi-classical description of the concept of cross-section. Ever since Rutherford performed this scattering experiment on alpha particles from a certain radioactive source, scattering has become a tool for investigating the forces between elementary particles. Let's start. This is the outline of this lecture video. Okay, so in this illustration here, this is a simple diagram showing the geiger marsden experiment shown this part of the figure the left column shows the scattering pattern that the experimenter expected to see given the thomson model also known as the plum pudding model of the atom on the other hand the right column shows the actual result along with the rutherford's new planetary model the angular distribution of the alpha particle, uh, which is just your helium atom, was measured as it interacts with a tin foil, which is a heavy metal gold as shown in the figure. Then we want to detect the scattered alpha particles after this interaction. If the Thomson or the Plum Pudding model is accurate, wherein we have a homogeneous positive substance in which electrons are embedded, we expect that the alpha particle will be or will have only small perturbation as shown here. Note that alpha particle is smaller compared to an atom. On the other hand, if there is a dense positively charged nucleus play somewhere at the middle portion of the atom. We can expect a larger deflection of, of the alpha particle as shown in this part. This is what they observe in the Rutherford scattering experiment. In 1911, Rutherford performed scattering experiments. Alpha particle from a radioactive source were allowed to strike a thin gold foil as shown in this drawing. Alpha particles produce a tiny but visible flash of light when they strike a certain fluorescent screen. This thin gold foil here had a circular fluorescent zinc sulfide surrounding this uh, material. Thus, a tiny flash was produced at the point of interaction of the alpha particle and the screen. Surprisingly, alpha particles were found at large deflection angles and some were found to be back scattered. We have these three basic observations based on the scattering experiment of Rutherford. First, most of the alpha particles pass through the foil without undergoing any deflection. We can interpret this one as the atom, which is mostly empty space. Second, a few alpha particles underwent deflection through small angles. And this shows that the nucleus is positively charged as the alpha particles interact with it. The third one is that there are very few deflected uh, alpha particles deflected by backscattering or approximately uh, 180 degrees. And this shows that the nucleus carries most of the atoms mass. So your alpha particle interacts with a massive nucleus. The atom has a small, dense, positively charged nucleus as shown in this illustration. 
it is surrounded by electrons to fill the atomic volume. Thus, larger scattering angles would be possible, especially when a projectile, shown here for your case, we have the alpha particle, interacts with the target nucleus, as shown in this illustration. Assuming alpha particle and the nucleus are point charges, we can define the following parameters. First, we have this B here. This B is your impact parameter. And this is the minimum distance to which alpha would approach the nucleus if there are no force between them. If your impact parameter B is equal to zero, it means head-on collision or head collision. Next parameter is your scattering angle theta here. This is the angle between the asymptotic direction of approach of the alpha particle. So this is the, the trajectory of your alpha particle. The trajectories for this case I are hyperbolic. This equation is the second law of Newton, which shows the relationship between the rate at which the momentum changes to the Coulomb force between the projectile and the target nucleus. Then we have the conservation of kinetic energy, and this is a characteristic of an elastic scattering on a heavy metal. The target in this assumption does not recoil when hit by the projectile. That's important equation is this, we have the conservation of angular momentum. This equation shows the angular velocity. Uh, you can derive the Rutherford scattering using these equations. Let us talk about the change of momentum in the scattering. Given that this is an elastic scattering, the magnitude of the momentum must stay the same. Only the direction of the momentum is changed in the scattering due to the Coulomb repulsion. And therefore, Using this diagram at the right, we can derive this expression of the change in momentum, which is equal to 2p sine theta over 2. Using the second law of Newton and the Coulomb force, we can define the following. So your force F is equal to the change in momentum uh, with respect to time. And therefore, we can uh, derive this expression of your delta P change in momentum, which is equal to the integral of your force with respect to time. And this is your Coulomb force. And using this drawing here, we will assume that we have this symmetry. Note that the trajectories are symmetric with respect to this line here that define the distance of the closest approach with respect to the target. So we will have this angle here, phi. Given the symmetry, of our trajectories, we can express the change in momentum as the integral of f cosine phi, which is the angle with respect to that line that we have uh, defined earlier, dt. And therefore, with the Coulomb force, we can define your delta p with this expression. We can solve this integral given the conservation of angular momentum l. We have this expression for the angular momentum and for the, uh, for the velocity here, we can express it in terms of the rate of change for the r vector and for the arc length in terms of the change of your phi, angle phi. And therefore, we will have this magnitude of your angular momentum. Initially, your angular momentum is described by the initial velocity v0 and by the impact parameter v. So your L is also equal to this one. With the conservation of angular momentum, we can write that the magnitude of your angular momentum that we have derived before is equal to the initial angular momentum m v0 b. And therefore, you will arrive in this expression. Thus, we can express the change in the momentum, which is equal to this quantity. And therefore, we can evaluate the integral here in terms of cosine phi, d phi, 
for the limits of integration, negative phi and positive phi referring to the symmetrical angle present in your geometry. We can express our limits of integration in terms of negative phi and positive phi. And we know based on our geometry that this negative phi here going counterclockwise plus this positive phi here uh, going clockwise plus this uh, scattering angle theta is equal to pi or 180 degrees. And therefore, we can arrive with this uh, expression for your phi negative and phi positive. The change in momentum after evaluating the, the integral based on the limits of integration, we will have uh, this expression. And therefore, we know the relationship of your phi with your scattering angle theta as we have defined previously. And we will have this expression for the change in momentum. So from side 11, this is the expression for the change in momentum. And this is equal to the expression that we have derived after evaluating the integral. So therefore, we will have this expression for uh, the impact parameter and the scattering angle. We have this relationship based on our uh, expressions that we have derived before. Your Ke, Ke here refers to the initial kinetic energy of your projectile. And for head-on collision, we can define the kinetic energy, which is equal to this expression, times 1 over d naught. where d naught here refers to the closest approach, uh, approach of the projectile with respect to the target. Thus, we can express your impact parameter B, which is equal to d naught over 2 times 1 over tan uh, theta over 2. Your theta here is your scattering angle. The expression for the cross-section of Rutherford scattering can be derived further using this geometry here. We have particles from a ring defined by the impact parameter B and B plus BB, we have this uh, infinitesimal impact parameter, uh, scatter between the angle theta, which is this angle here, and theta minus D theta, which refers to this scattering angle here. We can express the differential cross-section using the geometry that we have defined before. Therefore, we will have this expression d sigma over d rho, which refers to your solid angle. And this is equal to b over sine theta times this magnitude db over d theta. By evaluating this derivative of your impact parameter with respect to the scattering angle theta, we will have this final expression here for the differential cross-section of the Rutherford scattering. And it has a relationship of 1 over sine to the fourth uh, theta over 2 times this quantity here. Rutherford's atomic model explains the structure of an atom in a very simple way. But it has drawbacks. First, the model states that electrons orbits the nucleus. And if this is the case, electrons must be accelerating due to the centripetal force, thus producing electromagnetic radiation. Second, the model does not say anything about how electrons are arranged in an atom. Last, we will define the general expression of cross-section. Cross-section can be derived using the counting uh, count rate of interaction uh, of projectile with the target. A detector at a distance r, as shown in this geometry, with a surface area of r squared d omega, can be used in counting the scattered projectile, wherein your i here is the initial intensity, your di refers to the scattered intensity. The rate of interaction uh, is expressed as the rate of projectiles multiplied by the surface density of the target. And the constant of proportionality for this equation refers to the cross-section.